Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is Module 2, Lesson 12. Angles associated with parallel lines. Okay. What do we know about parallel lines? Okay, well, by definition, two lines are parallel if... Now let me get my ruler out. Two lines are parallel on a plane if they continue forever and ever and ever and never intersect. So if I drew these two segments here, but if I put line arrows on the end of them, they're now not segments, but they are lines. So here are two lines. Okay, this point here and this point here are going to be the same distance apart as this point here and this point here and so on. The lines never get closer and therefore the lines will never intersect, so therefore they are parallel. To mark a line parallel, we put little arrows pointing one direction on them like that. This means that these two lines are parallel. Okay, so there's parallel lines. Now we're going to talk about angles associated with them. So... In figure below, we have line L, which is right here, and it is not parallel to line 2. As you can see, if we continued on down here and we continued on up here, they're getting closer and closer, and somewhere over here they will intersect, so they are not parallel. Use a protractor to measure angles 1 through 8, which, if any, are equal in measure, and explain why. So, let me do that. Okay, so here's my protractor that I use on this screen. And let me explain how to use a protractor if you aren't sure. Okay, right here there is like this little line coming down and then a horizontal line here. They are, this is perpendicular, 90 degrees. Okay, and these are, we call these cro the crosshairs. So, I want to line up the crosshair, the bottom of the where those two lines intersect, right at the angle, right at the vertex. It's called a vertex. So I'm going to put it as closely as possible. And then I want to rotate my protractor, see how we're rotating around, and I want to put that line right, I want it to line up right on that line, so it's right here. Okay, right there. So that is at zero, this is at 180. So the the angle measure of a straight line is 180 degrees. And mine has this little device here where I can slide this up and put it right on this line M right here. And then that is three marks beyond 60, so that is 63 degrees. So I'm going to move my protractor over, and I'm going to mark that 63 degrees. So we want to continue doing this for all of the angles. So I'm going to put it back. Close to center as possible, okay? And if that is 63 degrees and the whole thing is 180 degrees, what I can do is say 180 degrees, which is a straight line, minus 63 degrees will give me its supplement. It's called a supplementary angle. Two angles that add up to 180 are supplementary. So 180 minus 63 is 711, 117 degrees. So now if I go over from here, that is 60 plus 3. But if I come this way, the numbers are getting bigger. If we go this way, they're getting bigger from the other direction. So I'm starting at 0, and I'm counting opposite direction. And I want to look up here, and it's definitely 110 plus 5 plus 2 is 117 degrees. Okay, so this is 117 degrees. Alrighty, so now I'm going to rotate my compass, my compass, my protractor, around. I'm going to put it right on that vertex and rotate it until it is right in line again on that line. I'm off a little bit, right about there. Okay, grab this, bring it down to M. Actually, it's already there. Let's see it right here. And notice it didn't have to get moved. So that is 117 degrees, angle three. So now I'm gonna label that 117 degrees. 
And with this rule right here, I now know that since this is a straight line, and this is 117, then angle 4 has to be 63 degrees, because these two angles make this straight line, and they add up to 180. Okay, so there's one intersection, if you will, of this M, which is called a transversal, transversal M, and line L, 1. So opposite angles are called vertical, so they are congruent. 63 is congruent, 63, so we just learned something there. The two adjacent angles, meaning angles next to each other that share one common side, are supplementary, add up to 180 degrees. So if I find angle 1, I can subtract it from 180 and find angle 2. And then once I find those two, vertical angles are congruent. So I, can, I really only have to measure one angle, so I'm going to do that now with my protractor. So if I bring this back and I rotate it back, and I put the crosshairs right at the intersection of L2 and my transversal M, and then rotate it so it's sitting right on that line like that, and then I grab my pointer here and bring it up to line M, which is right there, I see that that is 76 degrees. C70, and then that mark right here is 5. Right here is 75, and one more is 76. So this is 76 degrees. I am not going to measure any more. Vertical angles are congruent. So I know since angle 2 is congruent to 4, they're both 63 degrees. Then if 6 is 76 degrees, then angle 8 is, has to be 76 degrees. Okay, now line L2 is a straight line. And notice that when we have our protractors on a line, the line is 180 degrees. The measure is 180 degrees. So if this is a 180 degree angle and I take away 76, that would be 180 degrees minus 76 degrees, I get 104 degrees. So angle 5 is 104 degrees. 5 and 7 are vertical and congruent. Therefore, that is also 104 degrees. Okay? It says which, if any, are equal measures and explain why. Use your transparency if needed. Okay. So what they're saying now is if you could copy that, rotate it 180 degrees. Remember, angle 7 has to be congruent to angle 4 if we rotate about this point here because angle measures are preserved under rotations. Okay? So I think I've explained all of this. I just haven't written it. But your explanation should be in writing. Vertical angles congruent. Adjacent angles supplementary. And rotation preserves angle measures. Okay. So now it's your turn. Try this one. Answer the questions. Pause the video. See how you do. And then when you're done, come back and check how you did. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So first of all, it says in the figure below, line L is parallel to L2. So I'm going to label that. L1 is parallel to L2. M is a transversal. A transversal means a line that is not parallel that intersects the two parallel lines. Use a protractor to measure angles 1 through 8 list the angles that are equal measures. So let's do that. Okay. So I'm going to, first of all, make this a little bit smaller. Okay. All right. So then I'm going to bring this over, put the crosshairs right on the vertex, the intersection of transversal M and line L. Rotate it so it's right on line L. Move this over so it's right on the line. And that is 141 degrees. Move my protractor out of the way. Label it 141 degrees. Angles measures are preserved under rotation. So if I rotate this 180 degrees, angle 2 will land right on top of angle 4. Vertical angles congruent, so this is 141 degrees. 
this angle one, so the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two equal 180 degrees because L1 is a straight line and that's the measure of a straight line. So then I plug in my givens. I don't know the measure of angle one, so I'll leave that. So I'm showing you this algebraically. The measure of angle two is 141 degrees and the sum of those two is 180. In order to solve this equation, I subtract 141 degrees from both sides. And when I do that, these cancel and I get the measure of angle one equals nine, three, 39 degrees. Okay, so the measure of angle one is 39 degrees. So now angle one and angle three are vertical. Vertical angles are congruent. So that is 39 degrees. So whenever we have two lines intersecting, all we need to do is measure one of the angles and then we can find the rest. So if I label these correctly, if I use one arc, that means they're congruent. Obviously two is not congruent to one because 141 does not equal 39. So I need to give it two arcs. So I'm going to label these with two. And that's how we determine, that's how we show angles that are congruent. Angles are congruent by those arcs that we draw. Two matches up with two, one matches up with one. Okay, now I'm going to move my protractor down, put it right on the vertex, the intersection point of M and L2. Okay, and this time I see that this is already where it's supposed to be. So if I put that right there, it's still 141 degrees. I did not have to move anything. So the measure of angle two and the measure of angle six are congruent. So I'm gonna write 141 degrees here. Keep in mind that if that is 141, it's vertical angle eight has to be 141 degrees as well. And the straight line, supplementary, I don't need to do the math again, I did it here. The measure of angle five is 39 degrees and therefore the measure of angle seven is 39 degrees. So notice what's going on here. Both intersections are the same measures. So now it says, A, what did you notice about the measure of angle one and the measure of angle five? And I would say the measure of angle one equaled the measure of angle five, which was 39 degrees. Why do you think this is so? Use your transparency if needed. Okay, so now that we're going to, we want to answer this. Do, why do you think this is so? And then this is your hint, use your transparency. Well, if I move angle two or one down to angle five, think of M as a, vert, as a uh, vector, if there was an arrow right here, so that'd be a translation. So the reason is translations preserve angle measures. Okay. Okay, translations preserve angle measures. Okay, B, what did you notice about the measure of angle three? So let me change the colors here. The measure of angle three and the measure of angle seven, okay? Well, I would say the measure of angle three equaled the measure of angle seven, which equaled 39 degrees. And why did you think this happened? Because translations preserve angle measures. Don't you wish you could do that on your paper? So copy that. Angle three was a translation to angle seven and translations preserve angle measures. Are there any other pairs of angles with the same relationship? If so, list them. Okay, so there are, so let me move this over here. So angle three was congruent to seven. The measure of angle two is equal to the measure of angle two became six and they equaled 
141 degrees, okay, the measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle five, each equaled 39 degrees. And finally, the measure of angle four equals the measure of angle eight, which equaled 141 degrees, all because translations preserve angle measures. C says, what did you notice about the measure of angle four and six? So here is angle four, and here is angle six. Okay, well, they're both 141 degrees. So I would say the measure of angle four equals the measure of angle six, and they both equal 141 degrees. Okay, this is a different reason. This is not a translation. This is a rotation, and if I rotated about that point right there, four would rotate around and become six. Okay. And the reason, just to save time, I'm going to do this. Bring this down here and change this to rotations. Reserve angle measures. We rotated at 180 degrees, so therefore it, the angle measures were preserved. Okay. Here is the lesson summary. Read this, review it, and go do your problem set. That is the end of lesson 12. Go do your problem set.